think we'll call the uh, Clark County Fire and Six Board of Commissioners meeting to order. Please rise and pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the law for the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice. Any addition to the agenda tonight? I'm sure. No, no. All right. I would need to read and approve the minutes from the August 6th meeting. I move we uh, approve and post as necessary. Uh, second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Passes. Correspondence. There's one item of correspondence from Chief Barrow to Richard Casper of Clark County Elections regarding the withdrawal of the revolution. Removing the item from the general election ballot. Yes. Citizen communication. Over you. I don't believe there's any citizen communication tonight, but I was going to do a short of question. But uh, as we'll report later in the board packet, the fire levy lid lift passed with 69.08%. And so we're very proud of that. But we know that. Past fire levy doesn't have anything to do with me as an individual in the department as an individual, but it has to do with us as a group. And we had some people that were really instrumental in helping the district with this process, and we wanted to take a moment to recognize. So the first person is Ed Falk. You want to come up? <coughs> so Ed is a citizen in our community. He's also a real estate agent, so he's a full-time businessman. But he um, helped us in numerous ways throughout the fire levy, and he answered many phone calls and reached out to our citizens and just did a tremendous amount of work um, on a volunteer basis. So we wanted to take the time to appreciate Thank you. you. I'd like to extend my gratitude to all of you because without your services, this great community does not move forward. So thank you. Thank all of our firefighters and our EMS staff. You do a fabulous job. Thanks. Um, the next person is Patrick Reynolds. Patrick, if you want to come up. So Patrick became involved in the district when his daughter Emily started the cadet program. And ever since then, he has been a huge support of District 6. Again, he did all the help that he did on the levy on a volunteer basis. Um, answered numerous phone calls, helped us with... Um, writing up some of the ballot measures and just did a ton of the work for the district. He's also one of our biggest Facebook and Instagram supporters. So we'd love to have him comment on those. Thank you. Graduated chief there, cadet chief. But um, last year I had two first responder calls to me personally. Uh, one was very scary and uh, I've spent about a year now in fusion clinics, three days a week, and I'm very vocal with people I meet about the importance. I see it. I've been in and out of hospitals for a year, and I've watched your crews professionally uh, answer the call. Uh, last time, I had to wake them up, and I felt horrible, and uh, you save lives. That's why we lift these levees. If it's one that you save at any cost, it's worth it. So keep doing what you're doing. Doing a good job. And next, we'd like to recognize IFF Local 452. So if we could have President Reese and Unit Vice President Hodgson come up. So not only do these guys do a ton of the work behind the scenes um, on a semi-volunteer basis, but don't get paid enough for what they do. But they are instrumental in helping us get the word out in ways that the district can't get the word out. And then they have a high level of professionalism that equates to our firefighters on the line and on the ground. And that's what helps us provide the service we do. So I'd like to recognize IFF Local 452 for helping with the level. Thank you. <laughs> well, I I, uh, I thank the chief, her executive team, the commissioners for this. This is pretty awesome. And I noticed that there's not a plaque uh, recognized the fire chief for her team, but uh, it takes a, a village to pull one of these things off, right? Uh, labor management, the community, uh, community support. There's one guy that's not here tonight. That's Kevin Hart. Uh, uh, Kevin Hart, his political action team, hit a home run. Uh, those guys went out. They pounded on 
few thousand doors uh, to get the, the message out, to get this thing passed. And uh, very much thank, them, thank Brandon and Frank in the back of the room. And although we're up here accepting this on behalf of Local 452, really it is the boots on the ground. And Patrick kind of touched on it, right? It's uh, it's what we do every single day. The bells go off, we go out and take care of the community, and that's what we have to do. So thanks to everybody. Thank you. One more person I need to recognize, and it's Dave Schmicky. So you can put the camera down. Come on up. <laughs> so part of Dave's job as the public information officer is to um, help the district with levies and do that process. But um, he has gotten the levy process down to where we call it almost a cookbook. He starts organizing us in about January and works daily on the levies that we do. So getting the information out, getting the videos out, and informing the public. And we couldn't do it without Dave. So I wanted to take time to recommend it. Yeah, there's, she does more work than she lets on. So just, you know, keep in mind, it, it's the daily for the chief as well, working on these levies. And when uh, the bulk of your funding comes from one source, it, uh, it, it exacts a fair amount of pressure. So, we had more than one night of trying to talk each other down. So, yeah. but a wonderful job for the, by the chief. Thank you. Those of you that are recognized, so just take a quick picture with the board. Sure. Right. And then I don't have to stay for the rest of the meeting. Yeah. <laughs> they get to know. Yeah. We haven't done this since the Yeah. yeah. So we're excused. Yes, you don't have to sit through the rest of it. Thanks again, everyone. We appreciate you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Nice work. That was nice. Well done. All right. Uh, committee reports. The no report from Health and Safety or Risk Management. Uh, fairgrounds. I just wanted to report that we met last week and discussed the budget for 2025. So we have um, some preliminary budget that we're working on and we'll present it at the district. Uh, EMS District 2. We did meet with the EMS District 2 last week. Um, EMS District 2 uh, granted funding for MDCs. Levrum, which is a software program that will help us plot and anticipate call volume and calls, and then money towards a consultant to start our EMS District 2 study. So they funded all that through the EMS District 2 fines, and I'm grateful that they did that. We can talk offline if we need to, but the, the readiness fees came up a few times. What readiness fees is what they referred to in the past as um, a subscription. Subsidies. Subsidies. Right. Yes. Okay. But that's from City of Vancouver right now, right? Right. Not it's not right. from EMS District. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. actually a million dollars. That is what the consultants estimated that it would be. Yes. It'd be a million dollars for Vancouver and then $500,000 for EMS District 2 is what the estimate was. There yeah. was also MCT. There was also. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and the NDCs. Okay. Very good. All right. Uh, there's, and there's the next meeting, September. September 9th. Okay. And, and at that meeting, we'll bring back um, a letter of agreement to the board. That letter of agreement will allow us to receive those funds from the MS District. Okay. Thank you. Uh, consent agenda. Move for approval. Second. All in favor, Chair. Two support. The July 2024 overtime summary report total overtime paid out was 247, 242, and 48 cents, majority of that being shift replacement overtime. Um, we will have a significant increase in overtime for August. However, um, a large portion of that, about 45,000 of that, will be reimbursed from the Park County Fair. So you'll see a bump, but that does get reimbursed. 
For the July 2024 budget performance report, we anticipate expenditures should be at 58.3%. Currently, we've expended 47.1 in fire and 47.7 in EMS. Thank you. Uh, old business, fire levy, lid lift. So thank you for the time to make those presentations tonight. I just wanted to report that the last numbers that we saw were 69.08% package rate. Very good. New business. Truck change order. Yeah, I'm going to turn it over to you, slide, 10 minutes of slide. Uh, I believe the chief uh, updated you guys a brief uh, last meeting about a truck change order after a brief construction trip back to Pierce. So I just want to take an opportunity to, again, thank the board for approving this purchase a couple of years ago, but then just kind of update you on the process and kind of bring you along on that change order request. Um, but as you know, a couple of years ago, we started uh, the process of getting into the truck business for Fire District 6. This is work that we typically uh, receive from Vancouver. And now we want to be our, you know, a self-sustaining fire service organization. And uh, so we, uh, the purchase of the truck was kind of part of that. So the process that we went through um, a couple of years ago was really just that first investigative phase. We went and toured uh, the TDAs at TVFNR, Clackamas, Portland Fire, uh, and Vancouver Fire Department. Uh, we also met with a consultant, uh, Steve Carruthers from Seattle, had about 12 hours worth of meetings on spec and layout with them. Uh, we moved forward in the process when we went back with the original uh, purchase of the TDA was the Portland spec, and that was also kind of based on TDF and R and Clackness. It also used that spec uh, when the original purchasing appears, uh, and we went with just kind of a standard layout. Uh, we then created an inventory group that just really poured through everyone's inventories and decided, like, what does a really standardized, you know, urban suburban truck look like as far as inventory? And once we had that, then we could really look at, like, where does everything go on this unit? Where, where you know, the spreaders can go, the cutters can go, the shore and the stabilization, that sort of thing. And, and so then we took that information on our free construction trip back to Pierce. And when we did that, um, that's kind of what comes up with some of these change orders. Uh, a quick review of the, the truck that we ordered is a 2025 Pierce Enforcer. We expect that in June of 2025. Um, it's a Cummins X-15 Allison transmission. It's a 107 foot uh, ascendant aerial with 70, 750 pound tip load, 500 pounds uh, tip from flowing water. Uh, it is a TDA with TAC 4 independent suspension, single axle. Overall length of the whole unit is going to be 58.8 feet, which is actually fairly condensed for a TDA. They are in the 60 foot range. So that's kind of a brief review. Uh, the change order that the chief kind of brought to you guys last uh, meeting, you also have in your board notes. Uh, this is kind of what it covers largely additional cabinetry design for ergonomics. This is you know, pull out uh, drawers, but these pull out drawers have to be really heavy duty. They're rated up to about 500 pounds because they go clear through the whole apparatus from one side to the other. So those could be pretty expensive. We also had to change some of the cabinet sizes uh, and then add all the shelving once we knew what was going to go where. Uh, additional costs were for pretty major lighting upgrades. And what kind of drove that change was the change in law with Washington State. Now we can have blue lights when parked on an apparatus scene. And studies have shown, as you guys know, that the blue lights really improve firefighter safety when on roadways. So we wanted a, a lighting component that can, you know, go from red and white flashing to a blue flash with the red and whites uh, when the parking brake is engaged. And those lights are quite expensive to see here inside. Um, so that's a good portion of that. Additional functional enhancements we made were, you know, certain things that uh, Brad Osborne, our uh, mechanic, requested were just like brake clamp fittings. Typically, those are pressure uh, fittings and 
having it screw on type it adds an additional cost because there's a whole bunch of them, but it improves the longevity and ease of maintenance for those fittings. Uh, also, tiller blind spot cameras were added, wiper controls, and spotting mirrors. A breakdown of the costs. So, overall, the change uh, order is for $80,000 to change. I'll get that here in a second, but um, that's where the money is going. So, $37,000 in apartments and drawer. Uh, and then the lighting was a $41,000 upgrade, which is the biggest. There are some paint changes that we made. Those are the aesthetic changes. Those functional uh, upgrades are things like those. Uh, blind spot cameras and break things. So that's kind of where we're at now. Um, we, you know, move forward would be approval of this change order that would begin the build process. We then start getting weekly updates from Pierce. They're ready to build the truck now. Um, we'll get uh, weekly photo updates in lieu of a mid trip inspection, and then we will go back for final inspection and then delivery. We expect the opportunity. Right. Questions? That blue light thing, is it when we when we fix that where you can respond with it? Will, will we do the we can on pro okay. Yeah. Right. But they have the capability to change color. Yeah, I think so. That's just a cop thing. That would be a good deal. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the change order. Eight zero five oh nine ninety. So the board would need to make a motion for that amount. Right. And I was just going to say, I, the committee obviously did a lot of work on this. Um, Eighty thousand dollars change order is hardly anything, you know, to get it to get it down to that point with only eighty thousand in change orders. Yeah, it was considerably more. Good job. <laughs> we really sharpened our pencil wow. to get it down there. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, good job, and I would move for approval of the uh, change orders in the amount of eighty thousand five hundred nine dollars. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, we do have a second. Uh, we will go into executive session in accordance with RCW 42 30 110G uh, for litigation. For litigation for how long? Five minutes. Five minutes. Ooh, no, I've that before. Like, okay. Uh, we'll be back here in five minutes. Uh, the board met in executive session and took no action. Uh, Roundtable, good of the order. I just wanted to refer out on the Clark County Fair. So that concluded. Again, that's one thing that takes many hands to put together. Chief Russell is really instrumental in that, as well as the support operations group. But they had a total of 135 incidents, 92 casual contacts, um, 43 patient reports, and 12 transports from the fair. The best peach shake I've ever had. <laughs> okay. It's pretty good for three bucks. It should be good, right? <laughs> yeah, and 452 also continued the memory makers program. So you had three I was going to say days. Yeah, three days. Oh, and I, I spent several days out there. And of course, when I got tired of walking around with the grandkids, I'd go sit at the fire station. But um, the folks working out there did a great job with the public. A lot of tours. Uh, Seppi had one five year old kid that he spent 30 minutes with. <laughs> Why? How come? What and he was patient through the whole thing, but everybody, everybody was really good. And with one of the many reasons we asked a level of seventy percent is our people are out there doing their job. So thank you, everybody that was out there. Appreciate it. If I could just kind of piggyback, I know the chief mentioned sports service volunteers, but just there was a couple of those guys that took the entire week who were out there in you know ninety five degree heat and our blues and sweat and storm, but. Yeah. Really helping us keep the station occupied and staffed the whole time if our crews got set calls out. So they were a huge impact as well. And very much appreciated as they are. Very good. All right. Uh, with that, we need to authorize August insurance and payroll warrants. Clark County Treasurer authorized August payroll with direct deposits, treasurer's check. Authorized August deposits, to federal FICA medical withholdings, treasurer's check. Authorized pre authorization invoice transmittal and authorized payment of current bills. So moved. Second, all in favor say aye. Aye. Meeting's adjourned.